we would now like to understand how independence works for two random variables that are continuous and have a joint density function. So if x and y have a joint density function f of x, y, that's equal to the marginal density f sub x of x times the marginal density f sub y of y, then x and y are independent. But the opposite is true as well. If x and y are independent, then we can say they are jointly continuous with a joint density function f of x, y equal f sub x of x times f sub y of y. So the first fact is starting with a joint density function, which we're able to separate out into a function of x times a function of y. And that tells us that x and y is independent. And the second fact says if we start with two independent random variables, then we can construct a jointly continuous distribution by multiplying the two probability distributions. So we'd like to prove both of those facts. So we're going to start with the first fact, the probability that x is in some set of outcomes, we'll call it A, and Y is in some set of outcomes, we'll call those B. If we have a joint density function, then that should be the double integral of F of X, Y, dy, dx, where we're integrating over the set of X values, A, and the set of Y values, B. Now, if that joint density function can be written as a function of x times a function of y, then that's f sub x of x times f sub y of y, and we're integrating that dy dx. But we know we can split this up into two different integrals. This is the integral over a of f sub x of x dx times the integral over b of f sub y of y. A nice fun fact that we can remember from multivariable calculus. Ah, but the first integral is exactly the probability that x is in a, and the second integral is the probability that y is in b, and that shows that the probabilities multiply, and so x and y are independent. Okay, now let's move on to the proof of 2. So again, we're going to start off with the probability that x is in A and y is in B. And because they're independent, we know that that's the probability that x is in A times the probability that y is in B. So we're starting with the fact that x and y are independent. Well, the probability x is in A is going to be integral over all the values of x in A of f sub x of x. And the probability of y in being in b is going to be the integral of all possible values b, f sub y of y dy. Now we can use that fun fact from multivariable calculus again to write this as a double integral, where the x's range in the set a and the y's range in the set b. And this is a double integral of f sub x of x times f sub y of y. And we can write that dy dx. Well, now that means that we have identified our joint density function for x and y. And it's the product of the two marginal densities. So this tells us that the joint density f of x, y must be f sub x times f sub y.
So now let's make use of these facts. So we're going to start with another example. We're going to let x and y have joint density function, 1 over 2 pi, e to the minus quantity x squared plus y squared over 2, where x and y are allowed to both vary between minus infinity and infinity. And the question is, are x and y independent? Well, f of x, y, the question is, can we split this up into a function of x times a function of y? Well, I'm going to rewrite 1 over 2 pi as 1 over square root of 2 pi times 1 over square root of 2 pi. And you'll see why I do that in a moment. And then I'm going to split up the exponential, because that's really e to the minus x squared over 2 times e to the minus y squared over 2. And so, yes, f of x, y can be split up into a function of x times a function of y. But that function of x and that function of y are recognizable. They are both the probability distribution for a standard normal random variable. So in fact, we can not only conclude that x and y are independent, but x is a normal random variable with mean 0, variance 1, and y is a normal random variable with mean zero, mean 0, variance 1. Let's move on to our last example. X is going to be the time until your iPhone battery no longer holds a charge, and Y will be the time until you drop your phone and crack the screen. So we're going to assume that X is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. So that's the time until your iPhone battery fails and no longer has a charge. That makes sense to be an exponential random variable. And then y is the time, is the exponential random variable with parameter mu. That's the time until you drop your phone and crack the screen. Again, it makes sense that we can have the time until the failure of the phone screen is a exponential random variable. Then what we're going to do is construct a joint density where f of x, y is f sub x of x times f sub y of y. So we're going to assume that x and y here are independent because the time until your phone battery no longer holds a charge is independent of the time it takes until you drop your phone and crack the screen. Okay, so if we multiply these two densities together, we should get lambda mu e to the minus lambda x times e to the minus mu y. That's if x and y are positive, and then of course, zero if x is less than zero or y is less than zero. So we can use this distribution to find some interesting probabilities, such as what is the probability your battery fails before the screen cracks? So in other words, what's the probability that x is less than y? Well, we did this in class before. The probability x is less than y is the integral from 0 to infinity, the integral from x to infinity of the joint distribution lambda mu e to the minus lambda x e to the minus mu y dy dx. I'm going to draw a little picture off to the side here so that you can see the re region of integration. We have the line y equals x. And again, as we did before, we're trying to integrate this green region. You can see that x, we're going to let vary from 0 to infinity. But y, we're going to start at x and go off to infinity. OK, so how do we do this integral? Well, I'm going to integrate 
from 0 to infinity. I'm going to pull all of the x's out. So we're going to get lambda e to the minus lambda x. And then just the y's are in the integral from x to infinity of mu e to the minus mu y dy dx. Okay, so we still have the outer integral. But the inner integral becomes, let's see, minus e to the minus mu y, evaluated between x and infinity. And we're still integrating that dx. Now, if we evaluate e to the minus mu y, as y goes to infinity, that's going to give us zero. And so what we're left with is lambda times e to the minus lambda plus mu x dx. So remember that the result of this evaluation is just going to be e to the minus mu x, which we're going to combine with the other exponential e to the minus lambda x. So now we just have one more integral to do. Okay, so the way that I'm going to do this integral is kind of similar to the way I'd done some of these integrals before. I'm going to multiply by 1 over lambda plus mu on the outside and multiply by lambda plus mu on the inside and have our, my integral of e to the minus lambda plus mu x dx. And then notice that the integral that I have there is an exponential random variable. So x less than y, that event is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda plus mu. So that's the integral over all possible values of x. And so that integral is 1. And so we're left with what's on the outside, lambda over lambda plus mu. You could all, always do this integral by hand if you like. Uh, but the result will still be lambda over lambda plus mu. I find that interesting. So the probability that your iPhone battery no longer holds a charge, uh, but before you drop the phone and crack the screen, is the parameter lambda for the iPhone battery not holding a charge anymore, divided by the sum of the two parameters for the exponential random variable, lambda and mu. We can quickly probably conclude that the probability that x is greater than y, or y is less than x, is going to be mu over lambda plus mu. And you can see that those two probabilities will sum to 1. OK. What if we wanted to find a probability distribution for t, the time until either your battery fails or the screen cracks? So in other words, in the probability of the time until your phone is no longer functional. One nice way to do this when working with exponentials is to find the probability, cumulative probability distribution for t, but not the probability that t is less than or equal to some time t, but the probability that t is greater than some time t. So this is actually 1 minus the cumulative distribution. And this has come in handy in working with exponential distributions. So this is the probability that the minimum of x and y is greater than t. 
That's the same thing as saying if the minimum of x and y is greater than t, then the, that's the probability that x is greater than t and y is greater than t at the same time. Well, we should be able to write that because x and y are independent as the probability of x being greater than t times the probability that y is greater than t. And the probability that x is greater than t for an exponential distribution with parameter lambda is e to the minus lambda t. So again, that's 1 minus the cumulative distribution. And the probability y is greater than t for an exponential random variable with parameter mu is e to the minus mu t. Again, that's 1 minus the cumulative distribution. So this is e to the minus lambda plus mu t. Ah, so the probability that t is less than or equal to t, the cumulative distribution for t, should be 1 minus that. 1 minus e to the minus lambda plus mu times t. Oh, well that seems to tell us that that's an exponential distribution Sorry, that t is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda plus mu. So that if you have two separate components that could fail on your iPhone, like the battery or the screen, then the time until one of those components fails is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda plus mu, where lambda and mu are the uh, parameters for the exponential distributions for the failure of the battery and the screen. I think that's kind of interesting. So now we finally are going to conclude with showing that whether our battery fails or screen cracks first is independent of the time that the first of those two events occurs. Okay, so so we're trying to figure or trying to show that the time until one of those two events occurs and essentially your phone fails is independent of which component fails. So we need to have an event and I'll call that event I for indicator and that event is 1 if x is less than y and 0 if x is greater than or equal to y. And we've already found the probabilities associated with this event. Okay, the probability that x is less than y, so that i equals 1, we found in the previous part was lambda over lambda plus mu, and the probability that i equals 0, that x is greater than or equal to y, we saw was mu over lambda plus mu. Those two probabilities sum to 1. And so what we would like to see is what is the probability that i equals 1 and the time to failure is somewhere between A and B. Well, if we can show that that probability is the probability that I equals 1 times the probability that A is less than or equal to T is less than or equal to B, then we would have shown that the event that X is less than Y, so the battery failing before the screen cracks, that that event is independent of the time at which the first of those two events occurs. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this. If i equals 1, if x is less than y, then the, and the time till failure of either x or y is between a and b, then a must have been the thing that failed first, so that's the probability that x is between a and b. And x is less than y. 
Okay, so we're going to set this up as an integral again. So the outer integral, because x is between a and b, is integral from a to b, and we're going to integrate lambda e to the minus lambda x. And the inner integral, the integral over y, is the integral from x to infinity of mu e to the minus mu y dy. This whole thing we're going to integrate dx. And we know that the integral goes from x to infinity because the event of y being bigger than x is represented as the integral from x to infinity. Okay. So we've got to do the inner integral, integral from a to b, lambda e to the minus lambda x is going to be multiplied by the inner integral. And we've done this integral before, and we saw that this ended up being e to the minus mu x. So that inner integral we did previously in part a, and we got e to the minus mu x. Well, another trick that we used is that we divided by lambda plus mu on the outside of that integral. And we multiplied by lambda plus mu on the inside of the integral and combined the exponentials. So we got e to the minus lambda plus mu x dx. And here we've also pulled the lambda out of the integral. And we will see that that's the product of two events, the, the probabilities of two events. The probability that i equals 1 is the lambda over lambda plus mu, and the probability that t is between a and b, that is the probability that we computed in the previous example. And so we've shown that the probability of x being less than y is independent of the time that the first of the two events occurs. Now, we could do the same argument for the probability i equals 0 and a is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to b, and that argument is very similar. And so we've shown that the events that uh, either your battery fails or your screen cracks first are independent of the time until one of those two or the first of those two events occurs.